All right. Hello and welcome to our information session with the Department of the Veterans or with the Department of Veterans Affairs and Federal Executive Board. I'm Emily Johnson. I'm a career counselor in the Career Center with Metro State. And before we get started, I'd like to share with everyone that today's info session is being recorded. Um, and if you'd like the recording afterwards, please send me a message so we can get it to you. Our session also includes live uh, closed captioning. Um, and so in the classroom, if you'd like to use this, we just have to add that or click that live transcript bot button at the bottom toolbar. But without further ado, we're very happy to have our friends from the Veterans Affairs uh, to host our info session called Navigating Through the Federal Employment Process. We have a couple guests who will join us, um, but we'll start with Jennifer so she can introduce herself. Um, but before we do that, I do want to thank you for giving up your time today to speak to our Metro students and alumni. Uh, as we learn from our presenters today, feel free to um, put questions in the chat if you're um, joining us live on your screen or in the classroom. Um, maybe write your questions down so when the Q&A time comes about, uh, you have your questions ready to go. Um, so with Without further ado, Jennifer, I'll let you take it from here. And again, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Emily, for the wonderful welcome, um, both Tuesday and today. So uh, yes, uh, my name is Jennifer Ware, and I am a human resources manager at uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs Debt Management Center. And um, so our organization is really unique in the federal government. Um, we are actually headquarters in Washington, DC, but we're all um, located, uh, you, most of us are located in the metro um, commuting area, Minneapolis and St. Paul. We're starting to venture off into other realms of the United States um, as far as having more remote positions and some other opportunities. And um, I, I know that that was something that um, Emily wanted um, us to share about uh, as far as remote possibilities for the federal government. And that is something that the federal government is, is looking to do more of, which is great for those who um, like to work from home or, or maybe are interested in not sticking around in one spot. Um, so there are opportunities for that. So uh, a little bit about me. I've been a federal employee now for almost 19 years. I started off uh, as a student uh, in, in, uh, in music education. And I decided after I graduated that I didn't want to uh, struggle like my friends were trying to find um, employment in um, education and in the music field. And I just, I, I just had a desire to keep playing music. And so I ended up joining the United States Army where I was stationed uh, in Alabama. And then when I was in Alabama, I realized that I really had a passion for, uh, for like the public relations side of, of um, what I did. And so I ended up um, moving to Minnesota uh, and pursuing a degree, a master's degree in um, administration at St. Mary's University. Uh, right here in the Twin Cities. And while I was in my internship, I also realized that in, being in the arts is really a challenge um, and it's hard to make a livable wage. And I ended up finding my way into government. And even though it wasn't the same as my active duty experience, uh, I was a little hesitant just because I was trying to get out of um, of that experience um, full time, I ended up staying in the military as part of a member of the National Guard. And then I was also able to work uh, full time as a federal employee, which I found um, had really great benefits. So um, I, I said to myself, I'm only going to do this for a little while until I can find another job. But um, time came and went. and. <laughs> And uh, I just realized the benefits were just so great in the federal government. And um, some of the, uh, the reasons that I wanted to work in the public sector were, um, you know, I was passionate about the arts and, and I really wanted to continue to do that. But I also found that I could still serve uh, by working for the federal government. So it was a way to still serve the public um, but also have stability in my life. And um, 
I have not regretted one moment now that I've decided to stay in government. So uh, I, I went from working at the National Guard headquarters here in Minnesota, um, where I gained a lot of experience as an analyst, and then I became a supervisor and moved on to the VA um, and then kind of moved up through the ranks. Later on, you're going to, um, you're also going to hear from my, my current supervisor who was recently promoted. So uh, you're going to hear his story and how he also started off as uh, basically just a, an entry level position. And now he's moved his way all the way up as a senior executive now in the, in the government. And so there's plenty of opportunities to, uh, to take advantage of um, to work for the federal government. So you have people that have all different degrees and then you have, uh, sometimes you find folks that uh, are in the same career field as you. Um, a lot of you, I, I, I have worked with a lot of Metro State University students and also former um, graduates. And uh, I, I know that your university is, uh, is great for, um, the practicality that you teach at your school and just making sure that you're successful uh, in the real world. And so a lot of you, you might have career um, uh, fields in, in just regular business, which is great because that can really open up the doors for a lot of different possibilities. But even those of you that might be in a career field that's more specialized, um, I'm an example of somebody who has a, a degree, a very specialized degree in music and education, and I was able to turn that into um, a totally different career field. So um, part of uh, the lessons that we learned today, especially with creating your, your job um, resume, is, is that everybody has something to offer, and uh, the, the best way that you can... Um, present yourself to any agency that you're looking to uh, become one of their team members is to be creative. If you're really passionate about their mission, that is very helpful. And also um, just using any of your skills that you that you bring to the table and creatively finding a way to connect that to um, what the, uh, the, the position um, is all about or, or what um, company that you're applying for. So uh, before I get started uh, into navig into our into our presentation, which is navigating um, kind of the technical side of um, of the website and how to develop a resume, uh, does anyone have any questions about careers in federal government and maybe some of the benefits that I've been talking about? Well, I will just go ahead and tell everybody they're not as curious as maybe they're they're leading on to be or they want somebody else to speak up. But um, one of the things about the federal government that's so great is we actually offer a pension and a lot of companies don't do that anymore. Um, so it's it's something where you're already, the government's already providing something for you um, when you're retiring. And so a lot of private sector um, employers, they, they don't have pensions anymore. Um, we're, we're in a very competitive job market, and that's something that the federal government offers. Another thing that they offer is up to five percent match on. Um, it's it's a it's kind of like a four hundred one k, but it's a uh, it's a match on either a traditional or a um, or a Roth IRA. So if you put in five percent um, of your salary, uh, the government will match that five percent every paycheck that you get, which then builds up, you know, this account of um, extra money that you get upon retirement, which is really great. Um, in addition to that, uh, we get a lot of time off. Um, every federal holiday, uh, we get off um, free and clear. And, uh, you know, I, I don't even remember how many there are off the top of my head, but there's so many. I mean, <laughs> some of the months have more than one holiday, federal holiday in them. Um, we just added um, June 19th um, as a federal holiday. So that's another holiday that we, we um, get to celebrate uh, diversity uh, every you know every month almost. And so um, that's an, another wonderful perk. Uh, we all, we all get four hours per pay period, which is every two weeks of sick leave that can be applied to either caring for ourselves or a family member um, who's, who's ill. 
um, that constitutes to about 104 hours a year, which is a lot of time. And then, um, and then your uh, your annual leave or your vacation leave, uh, you get you start off with four hours. And um, and I've been working for over 15 years now in the federal government, so I get eight hours of pay period, which is one whole day off every other, every two weeks, which is also a very great benefit. And so I'm not gonna do all the math calculations now, but you get a lot of days off per year. So um, if you're a member of the military, um, like I am, I'm currently serving um, federal employee and uh, part-time reservist, I get three weeks of military leave that the government pays for. So I get paid twice for my service, which is also another really great advantage of um, serving um, in the military and uh, for the federal government. Uh, and then in addition to that, the salaries are pretty competitive. And um, again, you, you have a, a really good, um, options for health care. Um, the government pays a very large sum of your health care. Uh, for instance, I, I have a, a basic plan for myself and, um, and I don't have it with family um, just because I, I choose um, not to for my entire family, but for us, for one person, um, every two weeks, it's about $115. So about $230 a month and it comes right out of your paycheck. And in addition to that, um, your co-pays are very cheap. So um, you can't really beat the health um, benefits that you get from working in the government. So that's what I can think of all, all off the top of my head. Um, does anyone uh, have any questions on any of that? Uh, let's get started now on navigating um, the USA Jobs um, website. So um, all of these slides, and we can um, get you a copy of um, the slides if you want one, I can drop it into the chat again so that anyone can download Jenna, it. Yeah. Before, before you continue, we did get a question from our classroom and the question oh, is about if FBI benefits and other federal positions are the same. Well, that is a great question. And so uh, the, the FBI is a, is a uh, federal agency as part of the Department of Justice. And they, uh, some agencies do have kind of their own special perks for being a part of them. Um, so for instance, if your agency has the budget, they sometimes pay for tuition reimbursement. They sometimes will pay for student loan repayments, depending on um, what their funding is. Uh, most federal agencies have a child subsidy program, so for child care, and almost every federal agency also has like a transit benefits. Um, there are certain agencies that can sometimes um, give you a sign-on bonus for positions that might be critical, so I'm not quite sure what the FBI might offer, but you could always talk with, um, with a recruiter from uh, the FBI and they might be able to tell a little bit more about their incentives. Um, it's hard sometimes to meet folks that are not um, some, <laughs> your application will go off into uh, usually a human resources center where somebody's going to review all your paperwork. And sometimes it's really difficult to, actually connect with somebody. And so um, opportunities like this and opportunities like um, like going to um, a separate job fair and talking with somebody or even looking up um, people's names like uh, on just doing a Google search and looking for like the Minneapolis field office for the for the FBI and being in contact with somebody, they might be able to point you in the direction of their, their HR so that you can reach out and ask some questions individually. Hopefully that Thank answers you, Jennifer. your question. And then we received another question to give a general overview about the Federal Executive Board. Oh, sure. So the Federal Executive Board of Minnesota is a federal agency that is ran by the Department of Interior. And their job is to basically collaborate with local federal agencies uh, to tackle 
anything from coming up with an emergency plan, for example, um, never thought we'd ever use it, but uh, our global pandemic that happened two years ago, the Federal Executive Board is really big on helping uh, agencies plan for um, emergencies. And so at one point before we even had like the internet uh, really capable of sending out notifications and things like that, when there was a weather delay or some type of maybe um, they, even with the civil unrest, the federal executive board would communicate with federal agencies to uh, determine if federal agencies should even be open um, due to an emergency situation. And, um, but they also put on things like leadership development programs. And so one of the biggest federal employee leadership development programs in the area is put on by the federal executive board. And so they put on a federal outreach and leadership development program, which is a pretty prestigious program where you get to network with federal employees from all over the metro. And it's a really great program to kind of just to network and get to know people at like a grassroots level. Um, I was able to participate in that program when I worked in my first federal job at the Minnesota National Guard headquarters. And it's amazing because people from my class I've been running into now for years to come in different types of events. And um, it really is a small circle of people um, after, after you get to know um, folks or even go through a program like that. Um, they also host um, other types of public relations events like the government on display. Um, they'll put on um, a program where federal government agencies are able to interact with the public to kind of explain more about what their mission is and, uh, op and, and what they do for the public. So that's also um, some, some really great ways that they contribute. Um, it's, it's a really fun organization and it's only it only has two full-time members with a lot of assistance from a board of directors and interns. Thank you, Jennifer. And I think that that description is just a really nice reminder that there's so many opportunities within federal government, regardless of what your major is. This is so correct. Uh, and like I said, I never thought that I'd be working in federal government as a music education major. <laughs> I I honestly, you could not have told me that this is where I would end up. And it's now become more than just a career. It's, you know, it's a passion. I get to help veterans and as one of my, one on my own, it's something I can't imagine doing something else. Um, some people are okay with making the big bucks and, and working for a big bank or some other big for-profit company. And that's totally okay as well. Um, but some of you might be really passionate about serving a good cause. And this is a really great way to do that. So if you're interested, I'm going to now take you through uh, the, the process of actually um, navigating the very cumbersome government website of U.S. Hijabs um, and try to give you at least a few tips on, um, on how, to, how to get started there. All right, I'm going to take you um, actually to the website. Again, I am going to share these slides so that you... Um, so that you all can can have a copy of it. But um, again, that website um, is, oh, I want to stay logged in, of course. That website is um, www.usajobs.gov. And anyone can just jump on and, and follow along if you'd like as well. I actually logged into my account because I want to um, show you all about some of the cool things that you can do. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is, um, is that website. So forgive me here, I'm trying to, to manage all of these different screens before I had Nathan helping out, but I think I'm gonna to have to just um, keep this in a, not in a presentation mode to help the best. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the, um, the features in USA Jobs that, we're gonna, that are gonna help you. And so, um, one of the best places to start is actually going to the help section. <laughs> and there are a lot of different articles and areas of information that you can find right on here. So if you don't remember a lot today, that's okay because it's all in here for you and you can look for it. And um, honestly, I, I wish I would have done this when I first started because I just kind of figured it out. And and there's, there's a lot of actually helpful tips in here. So um, 
they, they have um, information on the type of hiring paths. So this would be um, if you're eligible for this type of position. And so you can read that there's different icons that kind of help um, help you out. Uh, there are even special hiring authorities for just students and recent graduate. Um, I can also type in the search engine anything from resumes to um, anything else that you're looking for. So right here, um, I just looked up resume and it has a bunch of search results on things that um, that uh, that can help help you out. Um, the first thing that comes up is what should I include in my federal resume? And so this is the important um, section that you should probably remember. Um, there are there is a resume builder and we're going to go through that as well. But um, this information in here talks about all the, the stuff that uh, somebody who's reviewing your resume at first glance is going to need to verify some things. Um, and one of those is how long you've been doing a specific skill. Um, a lot of the positions require one year of specialized experience on certain skills. And so they need to know that either through paid or unpaid experience that you've performed that, that skill or that task. And uh, so, you know, even taking, taking college credits is an example of unpaid experience. You might have had an internship where you helped market for a business and that would help with anything from customer service to organization to communication. I mean, you just need to be creative on how you're uh, comparing your experience again to um, what's being asked um, in the in the job announcement, which we're going to go over as well. So it does include um, the type of um, things you need for to describe your work experience or your unpaid experience. Um, it talks about um, including your volunteer work and highlighting your accomplishments. So one thing that's really different between a regular resume and the federal government is that you need to actually expound upon your accomplishments in the results that you've produced. And so it's not okay for me to just say, I worked at, um, let's just say I worked at Starbucks and I um, helped um, customers with their orders. Um, you need to explain how your customer service impacted the company. So you might say something like um, uh, received, um, X amount of um, customer service um, compliments throughout um, throughout the last year um, for my certain for my customer service or for my ability to um, to explain um, the company's product or whatever that might be. You also would want to write in any type of awards. Let's say you want an award for. Um, for the way that you helped train um, three new employees in the organization, you, you'd want to um, include that. Um, anything that's quantifiable um, and, and just shows that you did you went above and beyond, um, that's important so that you can set yourself apart from somebody else. Now, um, in the in the private sector uh, or in other um, types of maybe positions, um, when you're uh, writing your resume, it's more bulleted because you have an opportunity in the interview to um, expound upon that experience and, and to showcase your accomplishments. But the way the federal government works is that you have to get by the minimal qualifications first in order to be referred on to that hiring official. And so the entire process of the application process is, um, is very important. It's not just, oh, I just talked to a recruiter and they you know, they seem to like me and now I'm going to get an interview. So that's really great. And then that's when you you showcase your talents. You have to do it um, a, a beforehand in your resume process as well. OK, so um, so this will just kind of gives you some tips and um, and and all the things that you need to include. Um, one of the other things that I recommend for everybody is um, is that you you your first time using this website is to actually go to the resume builder um you can save up to five different types of resumes and it's it's great because um when you use the resume builder you know what type of fields that the federal government's going to be looking for 
Um, so what you can do is you can just go to the to um, once you create an account, you go to documents and it will be blank, but you'll have an opportunity to create um, a resume right here. And um, in here, I just start making a new one. Um, if I had a, a different, so I have another one saved. Um, I can just I can just take all of these and I can um, because I already am in this position and I already uploaded that information, I can maybe just tweak it depending on what job it is. And, and so then I can, once I enter in the data, I can use it over and over again. So that's kind of a nice feature. But let's say I wanted to add some work experience. I would just add that and, um, and then just fill out this blank. But also um, you'll, you'll be able to see what kind of categories that they're looking for for each of your, your piece of work experience, which is important. One of the biggest things here is that duties, accomplishments, and related skills area. There's a 5,000 character limit, which seems like a lot of characters, right? <laughs> but the, the thing that I don't like about this feature is that you can't um, use styling um, as easy as you can if you write in Word and then just make it into a PDF. Um, but again, you don't want to miss any of the categories. So I would use the resume builder to start with just so that you, you don't pass over something that's really important. Um, so, so anyways, you would go through this process, you would add your work experience, um, you go through this, you can add your education in here. So um, you, they'll see what types of things that you'd like to add in there. Um, one of the things that I include in my education is the type of courses that I've taken, um, because some of them are prerequisites for federal employment. And one of those is um, if you're applying for a training position, a lot of times they want to see uh, what you're, if that you have a, um, some type of certification in education. And then another um, one that I know off the top of my head is there's a lot of accounting and finance that you have to have a certain amount of credits uh, in accounting in order to even qualify for, um, for that position. Um, so you might want to include how many credit hours you've taken in some of those specialized fields. And also it just kind of helps verify your experience as well. Um, and then in here I have my, my references and um, you can see you get to another page where you have job related um, training. So um, any type of training that you've taken that might help um, with your specialized experience if you know a different language. There, there might be a position out there that maybe it's customer service and they're looking for somebody that can speak dual languages to help out, out other customers. Um, some of the, the ones I, that come to mind is um, the Department of Homeland Security does have um, a lot of positions that work with um, people of, um, of different um, nationalities and they might need help with maybe an even interpreting services or something along those lines in their customer service roles. Um, if you've produced something that's um, a, considered a professional publication, like let's say you wrote in a manual for your agency or a standard operating procedure, um, I would add that here under the ad publication. Um, and then once you're done with that, um, you're going to get um, a resume that's going to look similar to the one that I'm going to show you, but mine is again created in Word and uploaded as a PDF so that I can use some style markings. And so, um, Jennifer, while you're sharing your resume, we received a question about um, um, movement and possibilities for advancement within uh, the federal government. And I think your resume really illustrates promotions and lots of changes in job growth. So maybe yeah. as you uh, share your resume, Sure, and, and Nathan also is a great example of that. He's actually probably a better example. I was really lucky. I ended up getting a temporary position with the National Guard at a really high grade um, because I was a master's student when I um, got my position. So I didn't start at the very like entry level that uh, many people start at, like Nathan has started at. And so he started off as a GS5, and we're talking only maybe 
12 years ago, and he's already at the GS-15 level, which is the highest level of the, of the um, federal government pay scale. So he went from an entry level position all the way up to a senior executive in a matter of 12 years. And so if that doesn't tell you something, then um, yes, there are tons of advancements and some agencies have more opportunities than others. Um, I'd like to say that I'm at a place uh, with Nathan here that we have a lot of opportunities for growth. Our organization has grown from 100 people probably in 2000 and eight to um, more than 300 now. And um, it just shows that we're growing um, our business um, and we have a need um, out there. And that's why we have so many more employees that we did when we first started. Um, not every organization is like that. We're re really fortunate. Um, some um, government agencies might, um, they might experience, um, uh, uh, they might be affected by like a government shutdown um, where they're not working for three months because there's a continuing resolution going on or some type of um, cease. And, and usually those folks will get paid um, eventually, but they might go three months where they're on unemployment because of, um, of a government shutdown. Um, our agency is pretty much exempt from that because we are collecting money on behalf of the government. And so you can imagine they need us to, um, to help get through some of those harder times. Um, but, but also, um, I'm Jennifer, I'm on now. I can speak a little bit more to that. To that. Um, sure. Um, I can speak a little bit more to that once you wrap up. Uh, sure, but I, sure, I yeah. will point out I will point out one of the benefits to working in the government is um, once you get in, you're you have a much better um, eligibility to go to other federal agencies. So while we may work for VA, our experience in VA in the in the financial management world um, would lend itself to other federal entities that also have those types of things. So if you're willing to move, if you're willing to um, relocate especially, but if you're willing to jump agencies, um, there's a lot of people even in our, our center that have come over from TSA or have come over from um, the uh, ADA. And, and so there's, there's opportunities in government to jump between federal agencies um, once you're in the system it's a lot easier than trying to get in from the outside. That is a really great point, Nathan. So um, when you're um, a student, um, you might be eligible for a recent graduate um, posting, um, but to be a US citizen and to just get into the government, it sometimes is very difficult uh, just because uh, there are, um, a bargaining unit agreements between the agency and the local bargaining unit that require the agency opens up those jobs internally to federal employees or um, to those with special hiring authorities like uh, veterans or Schedule A hires first before they open it up to the public. Um, for more critical positions, you might um, find it easier to get in, but that's why um, networking like we are now and getting to know people so that they can help you get in is sometimes the best way to start your federal your federal career. Um, and so um, when I go down to my resume, um, you'll see here um, that, um, so I do include my education in here. I include um, some of my, my military service and some of the professional development courses that I've taken. Um, I only include the last 10 years of my experience. I don't want to go further than that because we don't really pay attention to that as um, selecting officials. We want to kind of see what you've been doing the last um, few years, the last five years or so. Um, you can see here that I have bullet points on um, I talked about the Federal Outreach and Leadership Development Program and some other type of awards that I've gotten from this job, but this is when I worked in the National Guard. And the way that I do my resume kind of outlines um, the different job duties I've had and the percentage of time that I've worked in those jobs. That's not always, and Nathan's gonna show you, that's not always, or that's not how you have to do it, but that's just one way. Um, and you'll notice that I use phrases instead of like long paragraphs and um, I'm bolding some highlights like 
right here, I talk about how I was an assistant budget manager for all, uh, over $200 million. And so that's a statistic that an agency might be interested in. And so I'm highlighting that so that they can see that. And yes, you can see how I have grown um, in my position from a certain grade all the way up um, as you go through my different experiences until my, my present day, which now is two pages instead of just one like the others. Um, and you can see that um, I supervise um, between 10 and 25 um, supervisory or non-supervisory employees. And so that's a statistic that it, to me is important. And so I put that right in the top of my resume. And I could probably go on for an hour talking about um, ways uh, to, to best write your resume, but I, I think um, just looking for examples online for federal resumes might be a good place to start. And also, um, if anybody is interested in Nathan and I sharing our resumes, I'm sure we would be happy to um, send those off as well. Um, so just let us know if that's something that you're interested in just to kind of see it's, it's always easier to see something and model it after it uh, after somebody else's instead of just kind of trying to start from scratch. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to help um, if that's something that somebody is interested in. Um, okay, so we're going to get off of the resume um, writing. Um, that's a picture of my cat. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to get off of the resume writing um, and we're going to go on to um, uh, we're going to get on to the next section because we're running a little behind here. Um, so you can also create searches to fit the needs of you um, personally. Um, if you really want to um, to narrow down your search, um, I can show you how to do that in um, USA Jobs as well. And so I would just go to the home page and I could just start looking for work by just typing in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota as a place to start. So, okay, great. I want to stay in, in, in this area. And I have some stuff that's also saved on the side. So I'm going to get rid of that. But Minneapolis, Minnesota comes up right here on the side. And then I have ways to filter out things as well. So Let's say um, I want to look for things that are open to the public because I don't have any federal experience yet. But or let's say I'm a veteran or um, I'm a student or a recent graduate, I can also check those boxes and narrow my search down even more. Um, the salary range, um, if you're not familiar with the federal government yet, you might be expecting to make $70,000, $80,000 right out, out the gate, and that's just not a possibility because um, that's not an entry-level salary range, and you wouldn't know that. Um, so also just looking and seeing what grade levels things are at, and you can do that by just going to the grade. And so an entry-level position is normally a GS1. Um, oops, I made a mistake there. I pushed the other button. A GS1. Um, through a GS5 for, um, for any type of degree. And then you can also add on a GS6 and GS7. And, um, and you can also be qualified sometimes for those positions as well. So anything GS7 and below, um, just by having a degree in a related field to what you're applying for, you can qualify based on having a degree. So that is actually a really good way to get into the government. Um, but if you have a master's degree, for instance, let's say you have a master's degree in counseling and you want to be a, a counselor for the VA, and you could qualify at the GS9 level, which then would add two more tiers of salary for you. But you'll be able to see here, for that grade range, um, the maximum for a GS7 is a $60,000 range. So you don't want to limit yourself on, on the grade and salary um, based on maybe what you're thinking off the top of your head. Like, I think I should deserve to make this much money. Um, sometimes you have to get in your foot in the door in order to move your way up. And it happens very quickly. And you don't even notice that um, that maybe you're making less than you expected to when you, when you graduate. Um, you can also look what kind of job series and you can look through all of these. Um, it kind of gives you a header on, okay, the ones in the beginning are more like social sciences. 
Um, but human resources is one that I'm obviously very familiar with. Um, the 200 series is all human resources. If you're going into general management or administration, the 300 series. Um, for those of you who uh, might be into accounting um, in finance, it's the 500 series. And so you're going to get used to kind of some of these big bucket job series, um, depending on where, where you want to land. But let's say you're pretty open to that. You might want to just not even... Um, you, you might just want to see all the available jobs that are out there right now. And so, um, right, so right now, and also I could change the sort um, of how I want these to come out by when they're going to close. So the ones that are going to close the soonest. Um, and so then you can just start looking at some of the job titles and, and looking through those. Um, let's see here. I'm going to just open up one of these announcements. Um, let's just go into this um, care technician for the VHA, the Veterans Health Administration, which is not us, but let's just go in here and analyze this announcement. And so you want to make sure that this is open to you, and it is, it says open to the public. Now, if it was open to recent grads, it would say that as well. And so that would be also a really great opportunity because not a lot of people qualify for that, and it's a good way to get into the government. Um, over on the overview, you'll see when the opening and close dates are, you'll see what the salary is, where the vacancy is, how many there are. Um, what, this is only a temporary appointment, and so you want to pay attention to that type of thing, and you want to see if it's a full-time schedule. It does talk also about if it's a supervisory position, and a lot of times it doesn't say on here now, but it sometimes um, in this section, in the duty section, it will say if it's telework eligible. This one does not appear like it is, and I'm thinking it's probably because it's you're actually caring in a facility for um, patients. Um, and so that would be a position that wouldn't be telework eligible. But for ones that are, it would say, this one specifically says what type of schedule they are and some other things, and then some requirements. And so um, really quick, I'm gonna wrap up because I'm way over my time, but, um, the things that you want to pay attention to um, during your uh, your search is when you are applying, you want your resume to really fit into this specialized experience that's listed under the qualifications. So this whole paragraph here for this level, um, it tells you about the type of um, job that you want it or the type of skills that they're looking for. And so for me reading this, it looks like um, they're looking for somebody who might have, um, uh, it looks like almost like um, assistant nursing experience. So like um, taking vital signs from somebody, um, ad administering medication, um, maybe responding to a medical emergency. So like if this is something maybe where you have some internship experience on or whatever, you want to highlight that in um, your either your unpaid experience or your paid experience like we've talked about before. Um, another area, how you will be evaluated. Now, this one doesn't include um, kind of how ours are laid out. Um, sometimes our um, positions will actually have competencies listed here um, of how you will be evaluated, and those will, um, will give you other areas that you can highlight in your resume so that you don't miss those, um, those skills and you can expound upon them so that you can get through to the next level. So Nathan's going to actually talk to you about getting through to the next level and about audience and all that stuff. So um, before I turn it over to him, does anyone have any questions? I see our instructor going up to the desk and I think he will be typing away some questions for us. Okay, perfect. And so I'm going to also put this slide up here. Um, we talked about analyzing that job announcement and we want to make sure oh. that, um, that we are expounding upon that specialized experience in our resume and that's really important so i was wrong no questions oh there are no questions okay well perfect we'll turn it over to nathan and he's going to take it to the next um to the next part nathan do you want me to share my screen or did you want to go ahead and share yours i can go ahead and share okay sounds good all right so uh, thanks for inviting and putting up with me being a little bit late. We had some on-site visitors and, and the agenda went a little bit long today. Um, I got about 
15 minutes here, so I'll try to move through my material real quick. Uh, but as Jennifer alluded to, I am a director at VA's Debt Management Center, and I do have a lot of experience in the resume and interview uh, process, both as um, a participant and an applicant, but also as a supervisor and a manager overseeing it and, and being a part of it. Um, the government does have a lot of opportunities, and, and it's, it is a different process, and so you have to really apply yourself to that process. Um, to make the best use of it. And I, I do this in every one of the trainings I do. Nobody's ever good at a process the first time they do it. And so you really need to work to get into the, the system, but also learn and, and keep repeating that process. I've um, applied for probably no less than 30 jobs and interviewed for 20 plus of them in the 12 years I've been in the BA. And so um, I've done it a lot. It's not always pleasant, um, but you definitely get better at it the more you do it. Um, it, I did come in as a GS-5 uh, into the government. That is kind of the base uh, entry-level position for somebody who has a decrease. So I came out of college and about six months later got into VA. And I've had, in the last 12 years, this will be my ninth position. Um, so you have to, you have to change positions. Um, you don't jump from a GS-5 to a GS-9. Um, once you're in the, the system, uh, you're kind of applying to the next level. Uh, and, and you go through this application process over and over again, and you get better at it as you go. Um, so hopefully what I share with you will be helpful um, as you enter this process. So you get a little bit of insight that I didn't have when I entered the VA. Um, hopefully give you a little bit of a leg up. Um, and then it's just about taking those skills and honing them as you go forward. So first of all, uh, Jennifer talked a little more into the technical aspect of the hiring and the resume process. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up a little bit and give you a little bit more of the overview and the insight into it and, and how to apply yourself. Um, so first of all, I wanna give you some baseline. So what is the purpose of the resume review process? Um, it's really twofold. The first is to get candidates for an interview. Um, but specifically for the hiring officials, it's to take a large pool of candidates and narrow it down to those who are the best qualified so that I'm interviewing and looking at a list that is, you know, five to 10 candidates for one position instead of 100. So we're tr really trying to narrow the field of applicants down to something that is manageable so that we can run the interview process. Then, Another thing that we need to consider is what is the measure of a successful resume? Well, as I spoke to in the last point, if the, the goal is for us to get down to a short list to interview, your resume is successful when you can consistently make it to that interview process. Um, sometimes there's large groups of applicants, sometimes there's smaller groups, but you have to be able to get through the process to the point that you're in front of somebody and interviewing before you're ever going to get hired. And then talking a little bit fact and fiction, um, there are assumptions made about resumes all the time, um, both on the private company side and the government side. And so some of them are true and some of them aren't. Um, so trying to work through what is real and what do you, you need to do so that you can apply yourself effectively to this process is, is critically important. Um, Jennifer showed you her resume, it's eight-ish eight, eight pages. That seems like a lot, but there's reasons for that in the government. Mine is a little bit shorter than hers, and there's reasons why I feel like that's the best way for me to put it forward. Um, but you need to understand the whole process so that you can decide what's effective for you. As we move forward, there's um, some keys to effective resume writing, and this applies both for government and, and external um, resumes. And so the first thing you need to do is understand your audience. Um, you need to understand who you're writing to, and you need to give them what they're looking for. Um, I give the example of uh, uh, an individual or you going to a car dealership. If you have a family of seven and you're going to look to buy a Suburban and a salesman comes out and tries to sell you a, a Corvette, well, that may be fun and you may prefer it. Chances are you're not going to buy it that day. And the same applies to resumes. If if the job is analytics and that's what they need in that job and your resume is focused on your leadership, well, you're probably not going to be as successful as you could be. And so you have to understand first your audience and tailor your resume to that audience. And so 
I would always recommend that as you're developing your resume, you're putting forward a tailored resume that speaks to the specific job and the specific skills and abilities that you would need for that job. When you look at the government resume, we have two, do, two very distinct audience. The first is HR specialist. And so there's an external HR entity that looks at our resumes before it ever comes to a hiring official. Those specialists are looking through your whole resume, trying to decide if you have the skills and, and abilities and experience, the specialized experience to qualify for that job. They're trying to narrow that scope from maybe 150 resumes down to 10 or 15 for that hiring official. So you need to include enough in there that that HR specialist can identify that you have the specialized experience to be qualified for that, that position. Then they're going to try to see who is the best qualified out of there. And that's when it comes into those accomplishments and those specialized things that you've done and, and what you actually have done in previous positions or in your schooling that make you one of the better qualified. Once that review is done, then they send us a list to the hiring official that is the short list of candidates who are the best qualified. And we have the option to do an additional resume review at the hiring official level. And what that looks like is we usually take three to four um, members of agency management, whether they be analysts or supervisors, and we have them look through the resumes with a very specific set scoring matrix and, and things they're looking for. We do that to take a list of best qualified from maybe 20 candidates down to five. And so again, it's narrowing the scope of how many people we're going to interview because interviews take time and energy. And so we're trying to make sure that we're we're interviewing those who are best qualified and we're getting the best candidate. Secondly, you need to understand the process. And so understanding the process is what we're giving you today. We're trying to help you understand what the purpose of this process is and how to go about attacking it and analyzing it so that you can be successful. If you're just taking a resume and you're throwing it at a wall, eventually it might stick, um, but you're gonna have a lot of pain in that, that time that you're just trying to figure out what's going on. So um, the more you can understand the process, the better Jennifer mentioned going out on, on the website and, and researching you know, the government hiring processes, that's a good place to start, um, but also reviewing what we're giving you here. And the third is understand effective communication. This goes for any resume. You want to do some certain things so that your resume sticks out. You need to tailor to your audience. At the end of the day, the hiring official is concerned primarily about one thing, which is putting somebody in the position they have open who has the best skills and abilities to be successful. That is your audience. That's who you need to speak through. But you got to get to the process to get to that point so that you can communicate that in an interview. So always tailor to your audience and, and give them what they want. Make sure your skills and abilities that apply to that job are showing up in that resume. Focus on accomplishments. Everybody can speak the jargon, okay? We see resume after resume of people saying they have good communication skills. Well, that's fine and nice, but everybody's doing that. Show me how you've actually used those communication skills. So what is an accomplishment you have in that in that particular um, competency that would demonstrate you have that skill without just using jargon. So for instance, I have good communication skills or so I've been told. Um, instead of just saying that, I can say presented to a group of Metro State students of 30 on interview and resume building because of my recognized expertise in communication. That's something that shows accomplishment and tied it to a statistic. It gives a little bit more credential to that instead of you just using the typical jargon. Next, you want to be specific and include details. There's always in, in hiring officials' minds and in resume reviewers' minds, there's a little bit of a BS meter. And the biggest thing that you can do to eliminate that BS meter is to give specific details in those accomplishments. So you brief the president. Well, the president of what? And how long was that presentation? And all of those sorts of things matter. And that might be an extreme example. 
Um, but be specific into what you did. You know, you presented to a class. Well, how big was that class? How long was the presentation? Did you receive some accolades after it? Be specific and include those details. It'll really give a lot of credentials to what you're saying. And the last one here is consider your placement and layout. People who are reviewing resumes have very little time on their hands. I'm spending two to three minutes on a resume at most. And so you don't want to take up valuable space with things that don't matter to me in, in, in my review. And so um, some of the things that for a government agency don't really matter are, are keywords. Um, we don't do keyword searches. So if you have a whole block of text at the top of your resume that's for keyword searches, well, that's valuable real estate you used on something that doesn't matter to us. Um, another one would be like a, a mission statement or a vision statement. That's nice and, and there's ways to do those where they're effective in some situations. But for us, we're looking at very specific criteria and those don't matter to us. And so you, they may only be three lines, but those are three lines you could have put some skill or ability in your work experience or your education that would have mattered more to who you're talking to um, than that vision statement. So. Think about how you're laying out that resume and where you're placing those things so that they're more effective. Any questions on resume? That's a very quick overview and now I got two minutes on, on interview. So um, is there something I can answer um, further on resumes um, before I move on to interviews? Looks like we had something in the chat. Let me take a look at that. Perfect. Anybody have any other questions on kind of how you approach the resume process and understanding that a little bit better? All right, not hearing any, I will take this last two minutes to try to give you a little bit of a, a step up on the interview process. So first of all, the, the interview questions in the government are primarily performance-based questions. And that means we're focusing on particular performance in a situation or task and the action that you took and then the result. And the reason we do that is because we're, again, we're trying to get past the jargon. So. I want to know what skill or ability you have, but not only that, I want to know how have you used that in the past to be effective because it it takes things to a different level when you can actually demonstrate how you've used the skill or ability. Um, so when you go into an interview with these types of questions, you have to fully answer the question. There are usually two to five parts of that question. Um, each of those parts have a specific reason they're being asked and you need to answer them in full. Um, tell a story providing an example. So if I ask you about a specific time, I really want you to talk about something specific. So answer a specific time when you give that example, not this is generally what I do. This is how I typically prioritize. It's here's a time when I got three last minute deadlines that were all competing priorities. This is how I go about prioritizing it. In this case, I went to my boss and I said, which one is most important first? I executed that one and then I got on the other ones and I asked for help on the third one because I couldn't get to them all. Well, that's how you go about actually prioritizing and executing. And then what was the result? Well, we got all three priorities done within our team by the desired deadlines because I was able to prioritize what I needed to do, delegate what I didn't and work with others. Well, that demonstrates a whole lot more than saying, you know, I prioritize my work. Um, so be be clear in giving a specific example. Um, convey how you apply the practical skills and abilities. And that kind of goes to the example I just get, gave. The whole point of us asking you about a specific time is so that we can get insight into the skills and abilities you have and how you applied them. And so make sure you're doing that when you're in an interview. And most of our questions should lead you to that. But if you don't understand why we're asking them, a lot of people miss that point. When you go into an interview, your mindset has to be the has to understand the focus of the interview. At the end of the day, again, the focus of the interview is for me to identify whether you have the proper skills and abilities to be successful in this job and how well you're going to do that for me. And so don't get caught up with I don't like talking about myself. I don't like talking about myself either. But I can tell you the skills and abilities I have and how I'm successful in my job and my my career. And so if you have the proper mindset and you're just trying to link those two things, then you don't get worried about, well, I'm just bragging. No, I'm not bragging. I'm going to tell you this is the skill I have. This is how I used it. And this is how I will continue to use it for you to make you successful. Again, that, that focus has to be on the hiring official and the position. And it's not about the applicant. 
prepare and research, know what you're applying for, try to figure out who you're applying for and, and use some of those networking tools to figure out, you know, what is this job? What do they need? What are the skills and abilities they're looking for? Because if you know what they are, it'll give you a much better chance to answer to what they're asking you than if you're just coming in blind. If you don't know anybody and you're coming in blind to the government, use that that um, recruitment on USA Jobs. It, they tell you in there how you'll be evaluated, how the, what the job is, what you're going to be doing. And so use some of that to prepare if you don't have any other way to do it. Always answer the question fully um, and provide those good examples. You want to be specific and applicable to the question. So don't answer with something that is completely unrelated. You need to understand what they're asking. Use recent stuff when possible. You don't have to reach back five years and try to use some big example. Something as simple as what you did three weeks ago could better answer that question and show me you consistently use that skill or ability as opposed to trying to use something that is, you know, the big aha thing you did in the last 10 years. Well, if you did it 10 years ago, why aren't you doing it today? That's the question I have to ask myself. So try to use recent when possible and then work related. The more you can give us work related examples, the better I can see how you have that skill ability and you use it in the workplace. Um, outside examples aren't always bad. School examples are not bad at all. Um, but the more you can tie that skill you have and how you've used it in an environment similar to what I'm gonna have, the better off you're gonna be. Respond to the intent of the question. Once you get through the rest of it, then it's starting to look at why they're asking the questions they're asking. Um, and, and that takes a lot of skills and a lot of years of kind of understanding the process. So I won't go in that, but there's specific reasons the hiring officials asking a question. And so if you've gotten to the point where you're really good at all the rest of it, start thinking about what is their intent? What are they trying to identify in the question they ask? And then the last thing um, that's really helpful for those who are new is look at tools to how you frame your response. And you can Google either of these and they'll come up with exactly what it is and how you use it. Um, there's simple acronyms to help you frame an example and a response to a question. So PAR, problem, action, result, star, situation, task, action, result, they're very similar. So it is, okay, you asked me about a time that I did X. Well, instead of me talking generally, problem. Here's a problem I had when I was working with this group and this team in my in my undergrad. Here's the action I took to work with that team to solve the problem. And here's the result of that, that action. We were able to come together as a team, meet our deadline, be extremely successful in this presentation or whatever it is. So it helps you frame those responses in a way, uh, and, and I still do it to this day, um, that is more successful because you're it forces you into a specific example. I literally write these acronyms out on the piece of paper I'm taking notes on because I'll get through a question, I'll be like, I forgot again, I'll write PAR. And every question after that, I re problem, action, result. And the more you can do that, the better off you'll be. And then there's a whole list of things to avoid. Um, and I'll let you guys read that. You know, it's, it's a process you have to get used to doing and it takes time and it takes effort. Um, don't talk about, you know, you wanting to, to get pay. Everybody knows you want to get pay. Again, the focus of this has to be the position I'm hiring for as a hiring official and how you fit that position. So the more you dilute what we're talking about to be the focus on you, the less likely I am as a hiring official is going to think you really have an understanding of what I'm looking for and you're trying to meet my need. You're just trying to meet your need. We all know you have needs as an employer, an applicant that you're trying to meet. But that's not my focus. That's not what I need as an agency representative and as a hiring official. And so try to focus on how you can meet their need. And so ask those other questions once you have an offer, not up in front in the interview. Um, those are the questions that you deal with before you accept an offer, not in the interview process. So with that, that's as quickly as I could go. Sorry, I went a little late, Emily, but. That's okay. We and we got some thank yous from our classroom uh, for you, uh, Nathan and Jennifer. Thank you for all this great information. If our attendees have questions and wanted to reach out to either of you, how would you recommend that they try to connect with you? Well, we could I think put the easiest email. way is email. Okay. So would you be okay if I passed along your email? And, and Jennifer just shared her. Oh, perfect. They're in the chat. Um, so if um, the classroom wants to grab those, we can do that. I'll just give one simple plug for um, 
all of these things, I think, independently can sound overwhelming or unattainable. Uh, we have these great experts. You also have the support of the Career Center. Um, and so as you are looking for assistance with this, an application for federal government or any opportunities, know that we can assist with um, those questions and, and help you along through the process. So you have support here. So with that, I just want to thank you, Nathan and Jennifer, for all your um, information and, and sharing that with us and your time. This has been extremely generous. So thank you. Thank you for Thanks, having Emily. us. I Emily. hope it was helpful. And We'd like to also extend, if you ever have questions um, that you need our assistance with um, as career counselors, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to help. And we'd yeah. also be happy to send you any of our open vacancies that um, for, for those that um, might qualify. So we'll pass along that as well. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Nathan. And thank you to our class for joining us. I see Bill waving, so you all have a good rest of your day, and um, thank you again. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.